everyone. Anne Louise Gittleman here for First Lady of Nutrition podcast. And thank you so much for tuning in. You're making our podcast very, very popular. And if you'll take a look at annelouise.com, you'll see a new free download that we're offering, the Ultra Fast Fat Flush, which will provide you with four accelerators to fat flush your diet even better and faster than ever before. We're also so privileged to have such wonderful guests on our podcast, and today is no exception. I'd like to welcome Dr. William Shaw, the First Lady of Nutrition. Dr. William Shaw, how are you today? I'm, I'm a little bit under the weather, actually, and so uh, my stepdaughter has has become positive for the COVID, and uh, and so I I have some kind of uh, cold like symptoms. And so I don't know if I haven't got the, the test uh, yet to find out if I'm positive as well. Well, I wish you well. You certainly have all the ammunition to make your system invincible because you're the director at the Great Plains Laboratory. And not, yeah. only, the, not only that, but you're board certified in the fields of clinical chemistry and toxicology by the American Board of Clinical Chemistry. And you actually founded the Great Plains Lab, which does an ordinary testing, some of the most comprehensive testing that I've become aware of for ADHD, for Alzheimer's, for Parkinson's, for chronic fatigue, bipolar, to syndrome and other serious conditions. So I'd like to discuss that at the end of the podcast, if you will, but I'm today so interested in oxalates and why they become such an issue in 2021. So uh, oxalates come from a number of foods that are the highest in oxalates and the, uh, the two foods that are the, the greatest source are uh, uh, spinach and soy. Uh, but th but there are uh, a lot of others that are high in oxalate, but the the spinach and soy, are, I would say, are like super oxalate sources to the point that I recommend people uh, not use those foods at all. And I and I, I don't uh, uh, eat those foods. And so this was one of my uh, most uh, controversial uh, t uh, papers was on the the uh, the toxicity of the green smoothie diet. So a very popular book for heaven's yeah. sakes. Well, what yeah. about what about almonds that we've heard so much about these? Yes. So the, so the nuts the nuts are a big source. Most nuts also have a significant amount of oxalates, but um, but they're small compared to the uh, spinach and and. Uh, soy but you do have to work uh, uh be concerned about it my daughter my stepdaughter has uh, autism and and of course of course has the gluten and casein sensitivity and when and uh, we put her on um uh, uh to, to to for some cookie uh substitute we used uh, almond flour and it it really, the amount of oxalates caused her to have um, uh, have some abnormal symptoms that were associated with the uh, high amounts of oxalates. So we had to uh, we had to give up on that uh, on that recipe. Well, what are the symptoms of oxalate toxicity? Well, I mean, it, it, what it was is it, it didn't. They weren't the symptoms weren't specific for. For oxalate toxicity, they were they were um, exacerbation of uh, autism symptoms that became uh, uh, became uh, worse. You know, more abnormal behavior and um, um, and uh, things like uh, stimming is one of the the things that were the were the person with autism um, repeats task or. Or, uh, or, or, or keeps uh, uh, doing the same thing or something like that uh, over and over again. So those symptoms became more severe when, uh, when we had her taking the, the almond flour cookies. So, so even though milk and wheat were bad, so were the, the oxalates were also uh, a big, problem. And so we have somewhere in between. So what I would recommend is that, as I mentioned, I would not 
recommend the use of uh, soy protein or or um, spinach. I'd, I'd recommend those don't be used at all in the diet. For things like uh, nuts and berries commonly have high amounts, but you can, you just, you don't have to do a complete restriction. You might want to just um, uh, not go overboard on making those a major uh, portion of the diet. In other words, to be, um, to be somewhat moderate in the use of uh, those foods. And uh, so, so, websites that have list of all the highest ones. But um, if so, the ones that I the 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 the, the um, talk the the words I use are spinach, soy, nuts, and berries are the ones you need to be worried about with spinach and soy being essentially uh, non-existent. And if you want a healthy a healthy diet, so to after doing a lot of research, I've seen there there's no no single uh, biochemical benefit for, for oxalates. You know, many foods have some uh, downside and some upsides, but ox the, the oxalates, to my knowledge, have no beneficial uh, effects, uh, any bio beneficial biochemical uh, effects. They're all, they're all negative. The, the only organisms that actually have a, uh, can utilize oxalate are some of the uh, plants. The plants use oxalate as uh, structural elements to make the, the leaves rigid or to make um, the spines and cactus or things like that. But there is, as far as I know, in the uh, animal world, there's no, no single benefit uh, for oxalates. So what did the, we've got to backtrack a little bit for my listeners that are not in that are not as sophisticated in this arena. So why are oxalates dangerous? I mean, why is there so much concern about oxalates? Is everybody oxalate sensitive and yet they don't know it? Yeah. So so uh, the the thing that most that the greatest number of people are familiar with uh, with oxalate toxicity is is the uh, the problem with uh, kidney stones. So kidney stones can range from uh, uh, very small uh, masses to, uh, to cases where they were as big as a golf ball. So, and and uh, they get stuck in the mechanism of the, um, of, kid of the filtration of the kidney. And so they can deposit in the kidneys, in the uh, in the uh, renal uh, tubules, in the ureters, and 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 they're one of the most painful uh, things that there are because many many times the the oxalates form uh, may have very sharp edges. So so uh, so with these very sharp edges, if they get stuck in the uh, urinary tract, they're and they're like uh, little tiny knives or spears that are um, uh, sticking into the uh, the tissue in the urinary tract, causing extreme pain. And if it gets bad enough, of course, it can be fatal. Um, and and it is one of the more uh, painful experiences. Although although many people know about this. Uh, virtually any tissue in the body can be adversely affected by the high amounts of oxalate. So um, in autism, for example, children with autism commonly have uh, eye pain in which the eye pain is so severe they actually poke out their own eyes oh. to relieve the pain. And so what I suspect this is, uh, I found that uh, the amounts of oxalates in the urine are highest in the group of people with autism. So they have, matter of fact, they're so high that to begin with, I thought maybe they would have, they had a, a uh, inborn error of metabolism. Uh, there's uh, uh, three different genetic deficiencies involving oxalates where oxalates are high, but that that's, I found that it's not the case in, and actually in autism, what I'm finding is 
it's it's not the food that's usually the problem, although it is occasionally, it is problems with mold. So when the person is infected with mold in the uh, intestinal tract and common uh, molds are, are called aspergillus uh, and uh, penicillium, they're some of the most common molds. And so if they colonize the intestinal tract, uh, most of these organisms produce oxalates. And in addition, candida uh, can also produce uh, oxalates by an indirect method. So the candida produces precursors, uh, substances that, that are not oxalate themselves, but when the human takes up the uh, products from candida, the human uh, converts them to oxalates. And this is one of the reasons, one of the common uh, diseases of women, the vulvodynia, where there's uh, pain in the vagina and the, 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 um, uh, the reproductive tract and there's a considerable pain. It's because it's the, it's the same thing that's causing pain in kidney stones. These, ox these oxalates are, are forming in the reproductive tract and they're very, uh, corrosive and and because of their sharp edges they they they're very uh, irritating and so one of the treatments for for vulvodynia is um, is uh, antifungal uh, treatment in addition to uh, eliminating uh, foods that are high in uh, oxalates and and some of the kids with autism have the, had the same problem because they're oxalates are so high, um, they, uh, they would not urinate on a regular basis. So if they would urinate, they would only excrete like uh, a few thimblefuls of urine, but then they would do this over and over again. Instead of having a, a large void where, you know, 100 mils or 200 mils of urine come out, it would be just a tiny amount. So they might urinate like 100 or 150 times uh, a day. And, and what I suspect it's because the oxalates are so painful that, that uh, they, they urinate a small amount because it if hurts. Large void, the, these crystals are pushing against the walls of the urinary tract and causing. Uh, severe pain. And so that's probably the reason. But as I mentioned, after a lot of work, I suspect that the major cause is the uh, problem with uh, mold in, in the probably the majority of children with autism. And of course, I've just published a, uh, an article on that uh, 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 a month or so ago, and, and on the uh, recovery, a complete recovery from autism using a uh, uh, treating the uh, mold problem with uh, with um, uh, one of the potent uh, and antifungal drugs. So, do you have to use drugs to treat the mold? Are there natural substances that'll treat the mold in these cases? Uh, there, they they may they may. Uh, it's it's just at this point, I I I don't I don't know. So, I would say, you know, for the parent of a child with autism who's having, I think I would I would go right to the pharmaceutical uh, uh, treatment. But there but there. Uh, um, there's uh, some of the drugs that are uh, very non-toxic, like nystatin, uh, and and um, I suspect that a lot of over-the-counter products may also work. The problem is, um, I don't know. You know, this is relatively new research, and and what I do know is that so we had a person with uh, uh, complete autism and really nothing else had worked. And then after, it was the fastest recovery from autism that's ever been documented, about a oh month my goodness. going from complete autism to absolutely no symptoms of autism at, uh, at all. And from uh, not being able to speak at all to, um, 
after the treatment had completely normal speech and, and was very um, uh, socially attuned. He saw that the, the child saw that his dad had a worried look and he walked up to the father and put his hand on his knee and said, you don't have to worry about me anymore, dad. I'm completely recovered now. Oh my goodness, what a story. So this mold seems to be very pervasive. And you, you mentioned some of the pharmaceuticals. What about for an adult? Uh, you would, I mean, it's uh, uh, the interesting thing is we, we did use a very high dose of um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, dr the drug uh, uh, called Boronox. Um, we actually used an um, adult dosage, and this was uh, well, working with Dr. Sidney Baker, you know, the founder of Defeat Autism Now. And what what we found is that the child had very high amounts of the markers of aspergillus that are in the organic acid test. So you can detect mold for, by two different tests: the organic acid test and and we have a separate test for uh, mycotoxins in urine. So either one gives information. Probably the mycotoxin is probably somewhat more uh, comprehensive uh, than the organic acid test, but we still detect a lot of people who have the uh, abnormal mold compounds with organic acid. So that, that's one of the benefits with organic acid tests. You can check many different microorganisms. You can check Clostridia bacteria, Candida, uh, mold. Uh, so, so it's a, uh, and then plus all the vitamin deficiencies and uh, genetic diseases, uh, neurotransmitters. So it's a very a comprehensive test to begin with if you're not sure what what's going on in the patient it's it's uh, can be a good place to start so let, let me tell everybody that these tests are available through great plains laboratory and i am a um, practitioner with great plains laboratory so please get in touch with me but you said something to me offline that i think is important to mention and then we'll get back to oxalates, but I find this totally fascinating. You said that you oftentimes find mold and clostridia in Parkinson's and you see mold in Alzheimer's. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I think mold is one of the uh, most exciting uh, uh, fields for, for uh, medical treatment that has been around for, for decades. So uh, the... Uh, so we have found a very high incidence of uh, the compounds from uh, mold uh, on the organic acid test, as well as on the mycotoxin test, very high amounts. I've been, uh, you know, uh, working on trying to get the attention of some of the uh, people uh, who, you know, who have this problem, uh, who are celebrities, uh, you know, the... Um, Michael... Um, yeah, Michael. <laughs> and I've, I can't Michael think of Fox. His Michael Fox. Fox. Yeah, Michael Fox. So we've sent, we've sent things. We said, we'll do the test for free for you. Oh, but, for heaven's sakes. You know, the, he has a very big foundation. And so, you know, it's so big that it's somewhat bureaucratic. So we really didn't uh, get through because I think that would... Uh, that, that would probably be, you know, doing something like this on a celebrity is probably worth doing 50, you know, scientific papers on the... On so the, true. Well, you should try Neil Diamond. I understand he has Parkinson's. Oh, okay. And I think he may be more amenable, just an FYI. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So maybe <laughs> do that. So you say, my people are going to really want to know this. Uh, one of the drugs that you use, the pharmaceuticals, is Sporinex. Is that one of the most non-toxic? Are there any side effects? Uh, there are, so Sporinox is one that does have side effects, and it's not the most potent. There are, there are drugs that are even more potent and even more expensive. Um, so it's kind of like in the middle range. Uh, 
So what we see with that is about perhaps about 2% of individuals will have abnormal liver uh, function test, but they're, they're not like um, permanently impaired by that, but they, they would have to stop the treatment. So, but that's still good, you know, so 2% having problems and 98% of people not, not having any uh, significant uh, side effects taking the, the, uh, the drug. What about and, Diflucan? Diflucan, that's you. Uh, Diflucan is not nearly as effective. So for uh, whatever reasons is, you know, it's, it can be very effective for candida. It's not nearly as effective for mold. Uh, for mold. And this is sometimes a problem with insurance because, you know, insurance companies are going to hassle the person and say, why can't you use something cheaper? And, um, you know, that's a good idea, but the Sporinox is one of the ones that is uh, um, the, 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 the brand name of uh, Sporinox is, um, is uh, even the, the parent thought was even more effective. It's called itraconazole. And of course, it's probably double the price of you know, the brand name. Are there any natural remedies that people can use for mold? Yeah, there, there, there are a lot of them. So the, uh, a number of uh, supplement companies on the internet. So, so any of the things that say they're antifungal or working against yeast will also work against uh, most of the molds. And the biggest problem that is not addressed is that, is that uh, there's not enough attention paid to the fact that many people who have this problem become uh, colonized in their uh, gastrointestinal tract. So they get exposed to it because their house has mold or you know, they're, they're in a place where there was a lot of flooding. So like in the Houston area, their whole large uh, neighborhoods were virtually every house had uh, problems with uh, mold contamination. As a matter of fact, uh, I like to talk about it's in the uh, directions about treating mold or even in the, the Bible. So in, um, in one of the, uh, the, the books of the Old Testament, it, it says, if ye shall find that there's some black or red or uh, other stuff growing on the walls of your house, you need to call the rabbi and, <laughs> and he will come out and, and tell you to move out while he tests whether this is going to continue. And so there's a, it goes on for a couple pages in the Bible and, and, um, and, and they call it um, uh, a different name. The translations uh, are, are a plague. That's what, and pl a plague. And in, and in some uh, translations of the Bible, it's, uh, uh, it, it, so it can, be, it can be either plague or uh, leprosy. It will wow. say leprosy on your walls. Of course, people don't have leprosy on their walls, but they do have mold. And it says, if you find this, you have to remove that part of the house that's uh, contaminated and ye shall take it to the, uh, an unclean place, which really means the garbage dump. Mm -hmm. You need to remove those section of the house that are contaminated, put it in the garbage <laughs> dump. And um, so it's something that has been recognized even in the Bible as a problem. And so this is from Oh, at about four, four or five thousand years ago, people were uh, focused on the the uh, problem with mold as a, a a cause of disease. So, I just want to remind my listeners that I'm speaking to Dr. William Shaw. He's the director of the Great Plains Lab, and we're discussing mold right now because one of the byproducts of mold happens to be oxalates. And he has discovered that mold can be an underlying issue with many individuals, including children with autism, ADHD, and adults that may be coming down with Parkinson's or a full-fledged Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. Am I missing any of the, uh, the other issues that? Uh, uh, well, it, you know, it, it is really, it's almost all the 
serious neurologic disease. So for example, the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Oh, uh, ALS. Is uh, associated with uh, high amounts of uh, uh, mycotoxins. So it is, uh, you know, so this research is really opening up a whole new ways of treating some of these devastating uh, illnesses. And is the research, let me ask you this, is the research listed or published on Ed Gray Plains Laboratory on your website? Uh, there will be, uh, so several of the webinars on the website will, will uh, deal with this. Um, and, but I don't think it's on the, on the regular uh, places of the website, but it is on the so, several of the webinars, which are available to the public for no charge. You just have to go down and click on uh, one of the, if you click on one of the latest uh, webinars dealing with uh, mycotoxins, uh, those are uh, some of the ones, are, or I think we have one, mycotoxins and uh, organic acids. Um, that's a, uh, one of the topics. We have a whole bunch. I think there's more than more than a hundred different uh, topics um, for which we have webinars that are archived for, for anyone who wants to see it, no charge. And you just go, if you go to the main homepage and just scroll down, you'll see archived webinars and uh, all this in kind of information is available. And of course, we're we're, we're always looking to publish more uh, data and, and uh, get more papers out there and always uh, interested in, uh, in doing that. So back to oxalates for a minute. You, you mentioned previously that some people are more genetically predisposed. Can you be taking one of those genetic tests and to figure out if you, in fact, have a gene or two that may be a variant? Uh, you, you can. And matter of fact, the Great Plains in the past had those uh, genetic diseases uh, panels available with, I think it was like 1,500 different genetic variants. The problem was we had, uh, we, we only did the interpretations. We didn't do the DNA ourselves. and the lab doing the DNA went out of business because um, uh, insurance companies generally don't, ch don't ha um, handle uh, these kind of tests or don't approve them for payment. And so the company went out of business because of uh, inadequate uh, insurance reimbursement. Um, uh, many of the people who have the severe genetic disease will will have had symptoms when they're uh, when they're children. Since these are genetic diseases, they they start may start to have uh, um, problems. And in the severe case, uh, severe cases, it you know it causes extreme damage to the kidneys, um, but it also causes um, uh, very severe damage to the liver. And so people who had to get uh, uh, medical treatment for this, they, they, they had to have uh, uh, both kidney and liver transplants uh, simultaneously. Oh my but, goodness. But, it, but I, th this is probably only a tiny fraction of all the people uh, exposed to um, uh, oxalates. They, there is um, um, there, there, the, the vast majority of people, it's either diet, people who have made the mistake of going on to one of these green smoothie uh, fad diets um, or people who have severe mold. And, and then there's the other, other factor, people who have been uh, poisoned. So uh, uh, and antifreeze is toxic, not because antifreeze itself is toxic, but because the body converts it to oxalates. And that's what um, kills you in, uh, if, if you're exposed to that. It's, it's kind of like a common poison like, um, like uh, arsenic. Uh, and there were a number of cases in the, uh, in the press of 
you know, jilted lovers who tried to uh, kill their lover by putting uh, ethylene glycol in their coffee mm -hmm. uh, because it has a sweet taste. The other problem is animals like cats and dogs will sometimes have this problem. If the person has a leaky car radiator, um, the, the uh, antifreeze has a sweet taste. And so the animal will keep licking it and then uh, develop uh, oxalate poisoning. It's like lead, which is a sweet poison as well. Yeah, that's right. So other than the pain that you described and the fact that this could be a byproduct of mold, what are the other symptoms that somebody might be suffering from with oxalate toxicity? Uh, like one of, the, one of the things that's common is uh, pain in the eyes. So, so if they have, uh, so even though I mentioned the kids with autism, I, I find that occasionally adults will have this uh, uh, problem as well. Uh, they may also have, uh, see, uh, lesions in their skin, like in their legs, on their uh, knees. Um, the, the, the skin. Are we talking about lipomas? Uh, no, this is uh, the oxalates form in, uh, in, the, um, in the skin. And so uh, they, they cause a, abrasion. And, and eventually the person has like uh, black spots all over their uh, legs due to the, the uh, production of the oxalates uh, in the uh, skin. Um, and and, and um, uh, the, these can form in any tissue. So you can have problems with the oxalates forming in the brain in which your, you know, your mind will not function well, because the oxalates are have formed in your brain. <laughs> Another thing is uh, arrhythmias of the heart. So this is a very common thing, and I just wonder how many people who've you know had some kind of uh, medical treatment for their heart disease for their arrhythmias um, that it may just be due to the fact that they're they have excessive oxalates in their uh, diet. And so what happens is the oxalates um, are, are form crystals in the heart itself. And so that the, uh, when, when the heart beats, there's a wave of what's called depolarization that moves down the heart, which, and when it moves past the heart, that causes another heartbeat. But if there's excessive oxalate uh, deposition in the heart, uh, this is like a uh, it puts a roadblock, so this uh, this uh, nerve impulse that's that causes the heart to beat doesn't uh, doesn't function, and so the heart beats uh, irregularly. So uh, so so these things can be a problem in every organ in the body, the uh, uh, the liver. It can happen in the bones. So if it happens in the bones, if oxalates form high amounts in the uh, bones, the bones are the places where the um, white cells and the red cells are, are formed. And so the person may have anemia or deficiency of the immune system due to there not being enough. So it's, so it's a, a, you know, a great pretender. It can, it can manifest and on, on virtually every organ and, you know, throughout the body. Um, and 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 uh, it can it can cause people to have thyroid problems, for example. The same thing: the the crystals form in the thyroid gland, and then the thyroid gland is uh, is not producing the thyroid hormone in a uh, in a regular way. So, um, virtually every kind of um, disease may be due to the uh, problem with the. Uh, oxalate. And as I mentioned, there's no, no beneficial effect of, um, of uh, oxalates. And, uh, and one of the best papers, which I, I mentioned in one of my articles, which I think is also on the, on the uh, website, it, uh, and about the green smoothie problem is the Campbell Soup Company 
uh, one of their most popular soups is their vegetable soup. Mm. And, and, uh, and so they did a very large study to see which vegetables uh, were provided high amounts of oxalates. And, and, uh, and what they found is that uh, this was done, I think, I can't remember if it was mice or rats, they found it caused uh, extreme uh, fertility problems um, and, and that the animals were, were not able uh, to get pregnant or if they did, that there was uh, abortions of the, um, of the developing uh, animals when the, uh, there were high amounts of oxalates from the uh, using spinach uh, in the uh, high amounts of spinach in the diet. So based on that, they, they, uh, they're, they're, you know, Campbell's soup, if you look, read the label, you will not see any spinach included in their array of, um, of uh, vegetables. Uh, How interesting. So, so what greens would you suggest instead of spinach for my interested listeners? Lettuce. Lettuce has virtually no uh, no uh, oxalates. So and all types of lettuce, you know, the, the leafy lettuce, the iceberg lettuce, none, none of the, of the lettuce uh, family has any problem with uh, high oxalates. So if you're going to eat salads, that is by far. And so since getting into this, I always <laughs> avoid spinach salads. As a matter of fact, I've talked to a number of people at the conferences and I'll ask uh, who who has uh, uh, who likes to eat a big spinach salad every day on a regular basis? And everybody raises their hand. And and the people who raise the hand, I said, when was the last time you had kidney stones? And a significant number of the people uh, have kidney stones. So it'll start off. The person will start off. I wanted to make a good change for my health, and what the change was, they started. Uh, eating uh, spinach salads, which was their undoing. And invariably, within a couple of months, they'll have uh, kidney stones. So what about steamed greens? What about collards? Is that a lesser evil, so to speak? Collards and kale, of course, that's been- Yeah, so they're, probably, they're probably less. And, 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 and probably the best thing is to uh, not to go overboard on any single food. You know, e eating the same food day in and day out is not a good thing. So having a balance of foods is probably the safest way to prevent um, uh, something that's gonna cause big problems. Um, the other thing that is commonly omitted, which is a major problem is Jell-O. So, so Jell-O has no oxalates or any kind of uh, uh, gelatin product, but it has high amounts of amino acids called hydroxyproline. And these amino acids are converted to oxalates. So the same kind of studies found if you put rats on uh, diets high in uh, uh, gelatin, they, they would also develop uh, problems with uh, high amounts of uh, oxalate. And in one of, one of the most exciting new findings is, uh, is in the area of breast cancer. So I strongly suspect that oxalates may be the major factor. And the thing is, I'm full of ideas, but I don't have time to pursue every single one because mm. of, and, uh, but the, the evidence is very compelling. Well, when uh, oxalates were injected into the abdomen of, uh, of mice, a uh, tumor would form. Um, and, uh, and I, I suspect that this may also be due to the, uh, the, uh, I went, the veterinarian that I took my dog to, you know, when I was, I was, they had the lipomas, which are small, um, uh, generally small, but just, but sometimes can be giant as well, but most of the time they're small. And many, many pets will, many dogs will have, you know, 10 or 20 of these on the, uh, on their abdomen, and the vet was saying uh, they're very common. And I did a little literature search, and 1.7 million dogs a year are diagnosed with having these tumors. 
And, and what I suspect it's because of the moldy dog food. There's, you see things in the press or on the internet all the time. So virtually any dog food that uh, has grains in it is gonna have problems with mold. And then the mold is gonna produce oxalates. So I'm suspicious that the, uh, the oxalates produced uh, from the mold, which was in the dog food is the you know, cause of these tumors in dogs. And, and, and there's a very good chance it's the cause of tumors in humans. I think there would be, could be a tremendous uh, decrease in, um, in breast cancer. And I think it's something that's very worthwhile. Um, uh, people have noticed when you, when, when the, uh, when the, uh, the woman goes to um, have a, uh, a breast exam by uh, by x-rays, that it's very common to see these uh, uh, calcium crystals in the breast. And women who have these calcium crystals in the breast are much more likely uh, to develop breast cancer. And the study that was done on rats found that, that oxalates cause the production, uh, changes the transcription of the DNA so that the body is producing uh, many more compounds that increase the vulnerability to cancer. And this is such a simple thing. This would be, uh, so all of this research was indirect. I mean, I think there needs to be a, a major study uh, in, in, uh, in women to find out if uh, avoiding the high oxalates can uh, stop breast cancer. I think there's a, there's a good chance that may be the case. How oh, very interesting. So if somebody suspects that there may be an oxalate situation, I think everybody needs to suspect it because it seems to be so prevalent in so many conditions that are so so uh, almost epidemic today, then wouldn't you suggest doing your organic acids test would be a good preventative assessment? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And there are there are other there's uh, nutritional supplements that can diminish the so in addition to uh, foods having oxalate to molds produ producing oxalates, uh, you, you, the humans can also produce oxalates, uh, especially if they're vitamin B6 uh, deficient. And so one of the, uh, that's one of the simple therapies if, um, uh, if the person's you know, experiencing problems with kidney stones or having eye pain, or having severe lesions appearing in their skin, um, they can use um, uh, about 100 milligrams a day of B6 is very uh, helpful in, in altering the biochemical pathway by which the body makes oxalates. And so instead of making oxalates, the person with high B6 converts the precursors to glycine instead. And so that's that's another way of reducing oxalate in the, uh, in the person who has a uh, problem with uh, high oxalates. Easy peasy, what other supplements? Uh, B6, oh, and then, and then uh, calcium and magnesium citrate. So a lot of people think because uh, oxalate crystals, you know, have calcium that that's, you shouldn't use them, but that's, that's wrong because if you take calcium magnesium citrate, they'll form uh, complexes with the oxalate in the uh, intestinal tract. Uh, those complexes will then be insoluble and then will just leave the body in the poop without being absorbed. So, uh, so uh, the, best, the best thing is uh, a mixture of uh, calcium and magnesium citrate. Uh, every day, uh, you and you want to be careful. Too much magnesium, of course, it will cause loose, loose stool. So you, uh, so if you have, uh, if you're taking too much, your body says gives you that hint. You need to uh, cut back on that. But I'd say, oh, maybe 500 uh, milligrams, 500 to a thousand milligrams of a uh, a calcium and magnesium citrate. Uh, complex is very uh, useful in uh, preventing the absorption. So, so that, 
And um, if you have any yeast problem, candida, you need to treat it because that will prevent the uh, candida from also producing uh, oxalates. And, uh, and if you have a moldy house, you want to correct that problem. And then even people, once they've treated it, they may, it may have established in their intestinal tract, in which case they need to do Great Plains testing, the organic acid test or the uh, mycotoxin test. I think that's a must for everybody, Dr. Shaw. Last but not least, before I let you go, we have a lot of people here in North Idaho that have chronic sinusitis. They have blocked, clogged sinus cavities. I suspect a lot of that is mold. What say you? Oh, uh, so a very nice study was done at Mayo Clinic. And so even though in the past people were giving antibiotics to people who had sinus uh, infections, the study at Mayo Clinic showed about 98% of cases are due to mold in the uh, sinus cavities. So that's another that's another indication that you that you likely have mold, and and you may need to uh, to uh, to check your house out. And if your house is moldy, you need to uh, be contacting your rabbi, like in the old testament. <laughs> <laughs> who can come with the essential oils. Uh, that's very interesting. I, I have a very religious background in Judaism, and I know that the Israelites practice 613 specific laws, all designed for cleanliness, so that none of that really surprises me. There's so much wisdom we can learn from what the ancients knew. Yeah. So, I want to do a lightning rod just to conclude of major diseases, issues, autoimmune conditions that people I know listening will be very interested in. Just tell me the basic underlying prevalent um, root causes that you're seeing with just a sentence or two. So we talked a little bit about autism, Alzheimer's disease, you're seeing mold. Is there anything else people should be on the lookout for? Oh, uh, so, so the... Um... The ALS, the uh, problems with uh, a, a attention deficit, uh, people who have problems with uh, seizures, uh, all these uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, all of these may may have a role with uh, may have a connection with with uh, exposure to uh, uh, exposure to mold. So it's extremely. Matter of fact, it was something like 98% of people with chronic fatigue syndrome in one study had uh, elevated uh, mycotoxins in their urine. So uh, a very, a very common thing. So I would say anybody who has an illness that hasn't been effectively treated, in other words, you're not happy with the results you've got from, uh, from your medical care, you need to look, uh, you need to look elsewhere because these things, these are not rare things. They're extremely common things that have just been overlooked because of, I mean, it's really just because of ignorance, not looking for uh, new things as a, as a cause of illness. And the most effective natural supplement to get rid of mold, you mentioned Sporinox that's out there in terms Spor of- the Yeah, Sporinox yeah. is a prescription, but they're there are many others. Uh, there are many other co compounds that can help uh, with uh, uh, over-the-counter products like caprylic acid, medium-chain triglycerides, uh, tea tree oil. Uh, these are some of the common um, uh, antifungal. And if you look on a number of websites, there's some of these products that have like ten different uh, herbal things that uh, may work. Um, you just, you just have to know that if you've got a really serious illness, you, you've, got to, you've got to make sure whatever treatment you take that it's worked. So you do a baseline, and then if you think it's, you've treated the problem, do a follow-up. Because you know, it may be you're not getting relief of disease because the antifungal regimen you've tried has not been affected. So if you've got a serious illness, you've got to do some uh, serious testing to, uh, to make sure that you've uh, resolved whatever the problem is. Excellent. I want to thank you so much and remind my listeners that as a practitioner with the Great Plains Lab, 
I'm able to order any of these tests for you. I think they can be drop shift. Certainly the urine test, the organic acid test sounds like a must for everybody to get that baseline, especially if you have unresolved illness. So I want to thank you again, Dr. William Shaw. So yeah. thank, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thanks a lot, Anne Louise. I really appreciate this uh, opportunity. Thank you. And I want to thank my listeners for tuning in yet once again to a First Lady of Nutrition podcast. Visit annelouise.com, see my favorite supplements for fungus, yeast, and mold. And we'll be seeing you again next week. Have a beautiful week, safely, healthfully, with a lot of shalom. Bye-bye for now. Hi, everybody. I'm Ann Louise here with just one more thing. Thank you so much for being a fan of my work. And if you like this video, please check out all my other videos. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications.